It's uh, a pleasure to be here again at uh, what some of you know is my birthplace and uh, was the birthplace of my family for four generations. So <clears throat> uh, I would like to discuss today um, the subject of uh, nonlinear filtering of noise in the quantum domain. So the twist I would like to emphasize is the ability to apply such nonlinear filtering for uh, sensing and work extraction. And as I'll show, there is an intimate relation between the two. So what has uh, sparked this uh, um, interest on our side is that now there is the technical possibility uh, to achieve strong nonlinear coupling uh, of the uh, single photons. Uh, maybe there is a center pointer. Uh, okay. So, anyway, uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, this works. Right. Uh, so, uh, what I would like to show that uh, this ability to achieve nonlinear coupling at the level of single photons can be used to filter uh, noise which enters an interferometer, and that the output uh, uh, of uh, such a process can be used for uh, uh, quantum noise sensing in the sense that. One can infer noise statistics and correlations not uh, by interferometry as uh, usual. Do I, I don't speak think to I need it. Do I? No. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, instead, what we um, advocate is the ability to use work output as a measure of noise statistics. And another direction I would like to emphasize is the ability to perform phase microscopy with noise, with thermal noise, near the Heisenberg limit uh, by means of such uh, nonlinear filtering. And finally, uh, whereas all of what I've been saying so far is true for coherent unitary processes, uh, similar filtering can be obtained by measurements, which would be a poor man's version of these uh, processes. All right, so uh, as I said, the uh, event that uh, uh, sparked our interest has been the demonstration of nonlinear coupling uh, at the level of single photons. Uh, this was done by our um, um, experimental colleague at Weizmann, Otto Fürstenberg, and uh, um, the effect which uh, he observes is a collision, if you like, of two very weak pulses consisting of few photons uh, in a, a, a vapor medium where uh, the photons uh, are resonant with uh, this transition, are counter-propagating, and there is a control field that excites the atoms to uh, the reverse state. Uh, what he observes is a, an unprecedented giant uh, phase shift uh, of uh, one pulse on another, which is proportional, although not always in a linear way, uh, to the number of photons. And the uh, phase shift is of the order of pi per photon. Okay. Now, the idea behind it goes back to uh, our collaboration with uh, Michael Fleischauer and David Petrosian uh, in 2005, where we showed that uh, single photons can be converted into Rydberg polaritons in cold vapor, and uh, as a result, they acquire giant dipole moments, and these uh, dipole moments serve to correlate it by a dipole-dipole interaction, so that there is a, as a result, they acquire conditional phase shift depending on uh, the number of uh, uh, photons. <clears throat> now, this prediction from 2005 was, uh, in fact, observed first by Otto Fürstenberg when he worked for Routine in 2013, 
But now he has perfected the setup and is able to show that uh, such an effect is observable and, um, and in our uh, in particular interest is that it can be observed with thermal light. Why is that interesting? Okay, uh, we uh, use this effect as a basis for uh, this uh, prediction that um, one can build heat engines which are purely coherent, uh, nonlinear, and in that respect differ from all other uh, heat engines. Uh, if you uh, look at this scheme, it consists of four modes, two have equal temperature at the input, and two are much colder, preferably at zero temperature. Uh, and then they are uh, uh, um, passed through beam splitters such that a small fraction of uh, uh, a strong beam uh, goes in, and this small fraction is then a, a weak copy of the input um, intensities. Now, these uh, two weak copies are merged at a 50 50 beam splitter, and as they emerge, uh, they bear the correlations between the input fractions. But if what follows is a linear transformation, then nothing interesting happens. However, if instead you correlate uh, the uh, input, uh, the output uh, of the uh, beam mergers by a cross curve uh, phase shifter as here, then what you get is an output where the strong fraction of each input beam depends, is phase shifted uh, in a way that depends on the uh, cold uh, um, the input. And if you do the calculation, it turns out that this phase shift uh, is such that one uh, beam is phase shifted by the intensity of the other. So you create a nonlinear correlation between these two output beams. And this nonlinear correlations, correlation, even though you average over the random phases of the input, which is thermal, uh, it allows you to uh, preserve an interference that can be steered by adjusting the parameters, the nonlinearity and the uh, linear phase shifters. Uh, as a result, you can steer the intensity towards the mode that you are interested in, okay? And this is something that would never happen without the nonlinearity. So this steering is one of the functionalities which you require uh, uh, from uh, a uh, heat engine, but there is more. What uh, happens is you look at the output is that it becomes non-thermal. Uh, suppose that you repeat this uh, four-mode interaction in consecutive uh, elements which are similar to each other, such that the output of one becomes the input of the next one. What you then observe is that there is a gradual transformation from one element to the other uh, of the output in a way which shifts the uh, intensity peak away from the origin. And the more it is shifted from the origin, the more non-passive it is in our language. Non-passive means a state which is able to uh, deliver work. As long as you have monotonicity here, you have passivity, and it is only heat extraction that you get. But as you can see, it gradually becomes uh, non-passive and therefore capable of delivering work. So that was uh, the idea behind this paper, but uh, it is still technically um, a long way off. And what we would like instead to do uh, next is to focus on a simpler setup, which consists of two modes only, uh, where in the middle, 
uh, of this setup, you will have a nonlinear coupler such as this cross curve coupler. Now, uh, uh, Fürstenberg's setup is now uh, in work, but you could alternatively use the setup of the Valorax group where um, two microwave resonators are uh, dispersively coupled by a Josephson qubit. Okay, that would do basically uh, the same uh, job as uh, uh, Kirstenberg's cold atom uh, vapor. So there are ways of doing this now exper experimentally. Now, as I said, you can extract work from such a setup, but we wanted to look at a different perspective. And the perspective is that you can use this work as a measure of the uh, photon statistics of the output. By which I mean, suppose that I have this um, Bachtender interferometer where the two modes are coupled by a nonlinear element such as uh, the cross curve coupler. Now you get uh, these two output modes and each mode is then uh, connected to a mechanical workload, okay, uh, where you can uh, measure the amount of work which is performed on each of them. So instead of uh, correlating the outputs uh, as you do in interferometry, you would now observe uh, the uh, amount of work which is performed on each mode output separately. And what would you find? You would find that there is a strong connection between the amount of work and the statistics. Uh, the, uh, this mode, which is here the hotter mode at the uh, input, uh, acquires a property uh, whereby the odd photon numbers are missing if the nonlinear interaction is chosen to be, uh, the, the phase shift is chosen to be pi. Okay, so you observe that there are only even numbers, and the colder modes correspondingly acquires strong preponderance for odd numbers. So there is a strong connection between the nonlinearity and the selective uh, uh, discrimination of uh, uh, photon numbers. And if you now calculate the work which is associated with this output, you see that at this point of uh, uh, pi phase shift, pi nonlinear phase shift, you have a uh, basically a sum only over the even numbers, and this is uh, uh, the result of this non-monotonicity of the output. Uh, as a result, if you calculate the work efficiency, the ratio of the work output to the uh, heat input, you find that it tends to one quarter uh, in the limit of uh, large intensities. Why one quarter? Because the other quarter goes to heat extraction and together they constitute 50% of the output, whereas the other mode uh, accounts for the other 50%. Okay? So this is the best you can do with this uh, uh, setup in terms of work extraction. But what is important is that here I don't have to look at correlations of output modes, only at individual uh, uh, work output of each of them. Now, you can do more with that because you can use this to discriminate between different nonlinear processes. For example, if instead of this cross curve nonlinearity, I have a direct photon exchange of kth order, uh, k can be two or three or four, uh, then I can calculate that the uh, oscillations of the work output strongly depend on the number of photons involved in such an exchange. You can see it here. The higher the uh, photon number exchange, the faster is the oscillation of the work output. So this is one signature you can use. Another is the dependence of the maximum efficiency on the intensity. Whereas for cross care, as I was saying, it tends to one quarter in the limit of high intensity. For two or three photon exchange, it goes down 
with intensity. And this is a uh, strong signature that can distinguish between the two. <coughs> but then I come to what uh, to us is the most striking result, and that is that there is a direct connection between the coherence functions and the work output. Okay, in all processes which we've investigated, there is an inverse proportionality of G2 on uh, the uh, work output and an uh, inverse proportionality of G4 on the uh, variance uh, of the work to the fourth power. Now, why is that? The reason is that as the photon statistics is super thermal or super bunched, you get uh, still work, but much less than you would get if you go down to the limits of sub Poissonian statistics, where uh, the output is nearly coherent, uh, or better than coherent, if you like, and this corresponds to the maximum work extraction, the maximum non-passivity. So that's uh, a result which shows the perspective of using uh, work output to measure uh, statistics. But there is more. The other direction we're studying is um, phase spectroscopy with uh, or phase measurement uh, with uh, input noise. Uh, suppose that uh, this nonlinear Mach Zender interferometer that I was speaking of is now connected to another where there is an unknown uh, phase um, that you would like to estimate. Uh, what you can show, and this is rather surprising, is that given the maximum nonlinearity uh, phase shift of pi, uh, the uh, phase discrimination or phase sensitivity is way below the standard quantum limit, the shock noise limit, and uh, with thermal noise. And in fact, for certain phases, it can reach the Heisenberg limit, okay? Now, this you can show uh, in the case of parity measurement at the output, namely, if you measure the difference between the output intensities of the two modes, then uh, it comes out <coughs> that uh, you get essentially the same phase sensitivity for a Fox state, a pure Fox state, and for thermal light with the same average intensity. Now, this is curious, but what is even more curious is that if you calculate the quantum Fisher information, the maximum uh, information you get on um, the phase, then uh, what you can see is that for nearly perfect detectors, uh, not only that a Fox state uh, gives you uh, uh, a, a good phase discrimination, but the thermal one, the thermal input gives you twice as much information as a Fox state. Okay, here you see 30 instead of 15. Now, this is, I would say, unexpected. Uh, if you uh, go to lower detection efficiencies, then the situation reverses. The, uh, the Fox state gives you more information than thermal, but thermal is still, I would say, comparable, okay? Um, it still is uh, below the shock noise limit. So what does this show us? It shows us that you don't need non-classical light, neither at the input nor at the output, to get uh, sub-shock noise a phase sensitivity. What you need is, uh, in fact, um, a distribution of fog states, each of which contributes to the phase discrimination. The reason is that, uh, as we were taught by the late Dowling and demonstrated by the late Silverberg, uh, that uh, a Fox state is converted to a null state, and a null state gives you uh, a, a, a phase discrimination which is uh, 
is essentially at the Heisenberg limit. But if you have a thermal distribution of cold states, then in fact you will have better possibilities to achieve this phase uh, uh, sensitivity because the highest Fox state would then contribute more to the Fisher information. The Fisher information is proportional to the number of photons squared. Okay, so there is an advantage to using thermal light over uh, over um, uh, pure uh, entangled light, um, and you don't need coherence or entanglement at the output to achieve that, which to us is rather a surprise. Okay. So, so far I have discussed unitary ways of achieving such, um, such goals as, uh, as sensing, but you can do the same with measurements. Five, three minutes, okay. So one, uh, one uh, possibility that we studied was with our Stuttgart partners, when we showed that a probe, which is correlated to a spin bath uh, can convert by consecutive measurements uh, this uh, the, the thermal distribution of the spin bath into a sub uh, thermal, in fact, uh, nearly a pure state distribution, as you like. You see, you convert this broad distribution into narrow peaks, and this is done because there is a correlation between states of the bath and states of the probe. The, the probe can be um, initialized in either a uh, bright or a dark state depending on its correlation with the spin bath. And uh, when you observe a bright state, namely you observe four times a photon click coming from the probe, then this automatically prepares the bath state in this nearly pure uh, distribution. And once you have achieved that, you can place another probe in the bath and you will observe, as here shown experimentally, you will observe that this probe will leave them much, much longer than in the thermal uh, uh, bath that you had initially. You see, a thousand times or 10,000 times uh, longer. So this is at least one way of uh, uh, achieving uh, interesting effects with measurements. I will skip that and come to the conclusions. Now, what I've shown is first a paradigm change in the concept of heat engines, uh, which can be uh, realized by nonlinear coherent systems, okay, as opposed to uh, existing um, uh, heat engines. Uh, now, with the simple nonlinear two mode correlator, we can use work output as a sensor of uh, noise correlations, and you can achieve phase sensing at the Heisenberg limit by thermal light. Uh, and this can be done either unitarily or by means of uh, measurements. And there are interesting perspectives which we are studying now. Uh, in the context of biology with our partners based on such uh, noise correlations. I can tell you more if you are interested. Thank you very much.